जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहार
Srimati Bhakti Vidanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvise Shashunyavadi Paschacha Desi Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Reading from the Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 2, text number Esha Brahmi Stiti Parta Esha Brahmi Stiti Parta Nain 
Nainam prapya vimuyati Nainam prapya vimuyati Stitvashyam antakalepi Stitvashyam antakalepi Brahmanirvanam richati Esha Brahmi stiti parta Esha Brahmi stiti parta Nainam prapya vimuyati Nainam prapya vimuyati Stitvashyam antakalepi Stitvashyam antakalepi Brahmanirvanam richati Esha Brahmi stiti parta Esha Brahmi stiti parta Nainam prapya vimuyati Stitvashyam antakalepi Brahmanirvanam richati
इस भौतिक जीवन का अंत निश्चित है किंतु आध्यात्मिक दृष्टि से उन्नत जातियों के लिए इस जीवन अन्य जीवन प्रारंभ होता है इसी जीवन का अंत होने के क्योंकि दोनों चरम पद है अतः भगवान किसी भी अपनी माँ भक्ति में व्यस्त रहने का अर्थ है भगवत धाम को प्राप्त करना भौतिक जगत में इंद्रिय तृप्ति विषय कार्य होते हैं और आध्यात्मिक जगत में कृष्ण भगवान इसी जीवन में ही कृष्ण की प्राप्ति तत्काल ब्रह्म प्राप्ति जैसी ही है और जो कृष्ण भगवान अमृत में स्थित होता है वो निश्चित रूप से पहले ही भगवत धाम में प्रवेश कर चुका होता है ब्रह्म और भौतिक पदार्थ एक दूसरे से सरलता में बड़ी है अतः ब्रह्म स्थिति का अर्थ है भौतिक कार्यो को तत्पर न होना भगवत गीता में भगवत भक्ति को मुक्ति अवस्था माना गया है of the second chapter and Lord Krishna is concluding it by saying that if we practice this Krishna conscious process we can go back to Godhead we go back to home And Prabhupada writes in the purport that when we're practicing Krishna consciousness, we're already back to home, we're already back to Godhead. 
यदि आपने कृष्ण भावना को अभ्यास कर दिया है अभ्यास करना शुरू कर दिया कि देखिए ना आपने वही नहीं बोला था कि शायद तुम We're not in Bangkok. We're not in the city, but we're in the spiritual world because we're engaged in devotional service. That's the spiritual platform. Right. We walk in here, we walk up the stairs into this temple room and we can feel the transformation from the material world out there, how it's so different. I remember when I first started to go to the temple, I was, I joined Krishna Consciousness in London and I used to come from the, my office job every evening and go to the temple to Arti. And I was so glad to come into the temple atmosphere and I could feel that, that it's so different, the energy is totally different from outside in the material world. So it's described in this verse as Brahma Nirvana. The, the Buddhists, they always speak about Nirvana, the, the nothingness. But Prabhupada said, Brahma Nirvana means the kingdom of God, not nothing. In Buddhism, they want to make everything nothing. They're trying to escape all the misery of the material world. Mm -hmm. Buddhism there, they, they, they chant on beads, right? And they, they be, their beads also have 108 beads, 108 on a string. So I asked one of the monks, you know, what is the 108? And he told me, he said, this is 108 different kinds of suffering. So their whole meditation is on the suffering of the material world, how oh, there's so much suffering in this material body and how this body is going to die. Some of the, of course, all the Buddhist temples, they have the, the crematorium, they have that place for burning the dead bodies. And for most people, that's the only time they ever go to the, the Buddhist temple. Uh, so often the monks, it, for their meditation, they will sit inside the, that furnace where the body, and they will meditate that this is ultimately the end. And some temples they will keep the dead body there and the monks so they will sit and do the meditation in front of the dead body to remind themselves that ultimately life is nothing, that it's going to finish, nothing.
But Prabhupada said, there's no void anywhere. Wherever you go, you will find living entities. There's nothing void. Nowhere is void. Last night when we went to that, uh, that uh, you know, the, the festival for Dasera, there were people everywhere, you know, just masses of people, so many people. So Bangkok, there's no void. There's nothing void here in Bangkok. So we cannot simply escape the miseries of the material world. Uh, in Krishna consciousness, we also agree that the material body is, means suffering and that ultimately you have the body has to die. We understand that, but we don't just meditate on that alone. In one Buddhist temple, they had a picture of a skeleton hanging up. And this is what, what they, how they absorb themselves. In. But we have picked, we could see, we decorate our walls with pastimes of the Supreme Lord. We meditate on these. At the same time, we're not sahajya. We're not just meditating on Rasa Leela and the gopis and Krishna's pastimes with the young girls. We have to also understand the nature of the material world, that there is misery there in this material world. And so we were singing that song, that very nice song which Srila Bhaktivinoda has written, where Prabhu was singing the Shuddha Bhaktita. This song comes from Bhakti Vinod's collection of songs called Sharanagati. So in the Bhagavad Gita, in Prabhupada's purport, in 1865-66, where Krishna talks about surrender, in the purport there, Srila Prabhupada has listed the six items of surrender. Right. Devotional service is based on surrender, and surrender means, first of all, accepting what is not accepting what is favorable for devotional service and giving up what is not favorable for devotional sins. Then we have to also understand that only Krishna can protect us and only Krishna can maintain us. We should have no desire other than Krishna's desire. We should accept Krishna's desire, not our own desire. And we should always be meek and humble. So we were singing this song, Shuddha Bhakita. This is based on the first item of surrender, accepting everything favorable for devotional service. 
Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has written songs about each of the six items of surrender. And we were singing this song, Srila Bhakti tonight, because today is a codice. And in that song, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur also mentions about a codice. Madhavatiti Bhakti Janani, right? That by observing the holy days like Ikadasi, it becomes the mother of devotion for those devotees who take shelter of her. So holy days, Madhavatiti means not only Ekadasi but also Janmashtami and of course come, we have also, we're coming up to Kartik and Kartik we have also Govardhan Puja, Anakut festival, all of these different festivals. By observing them, it greatly increases our Bhakti. We want to increase our bhakti, there's a, there's a process. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur describes all the things we have to do to increase our bhakti. Taking the remnants from the devotees, taking the dust from the feet of devotees, and the water which is washed the feet of devotees, this is the first items. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna, Krishna Das Kaviraj describes a pastime about one great devotee named Kalidas, who was always, he always wanted to eat the remnants of the Vaishnavas. But, you know, Vaishnavas are humble. They don't like people to eat their remnants. I'm not going to, who's going to give their remnants to somebody to eat? No. So there was this very great devotee, Brahman, he was a very great saintly Vaishnava, and Kalidas wanted to eat the remnants of his foodstuffs. But, but the Brahman said, no, 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 you are a great devotee, I cannot give you my remnants. So this Kalidas is a very clever man, very cunning. He thought how to get the remnants. So he arranged that a big basket of mangoes would be sent to the home of this devotee. And so the man was a Brahmin, you know, he lived by charity, so it was common for him to receive gifts from people. So he accepted the mangoes and he offered them to his deity and then he and his wife, they took the Prasad. Mm. He sucked all the mango stones and everything and then after they finished then they threw them out the window, threw them out and they, you know, in Bengal, you know, you, you don't have a, a garbage disposal team coming collecting the garbage, you know, you have a pit and you bury it in the ground. And so he had a hole outside his house and he threw the mangoes into the hole there. 
So Kali Das, he was waiting when he saw the mango stones and he went and he got those mango stones and he sucked all the whatever was there left on the stone. In this way he was happy to get the remnants of the devotee. Of course there's also that pastime how uh, Narada Muni, what was it? Narada Muni wanted to get the remnants of Lord Narayan. So he he served Mother Lakshmi very faithfully for a long time. He gave her great personal service, and she became very obliged to him. So the Lakshmi was so obliged, she told Narada Muni that ask for some benediction, let me know what can I do to serve you. You have done so much for me, how can I serve you? So Narada Muni told her, I would like to get the remnants, Lord Narayan. And when Mother Lakshmi heard that, she was, oh, nobody gets the remnants of Lord Narayan. Lord Narayan said, nobody should get his remnants. But she promised that to give benediction, so he, she said, all right, you have to wait for some time. I can't, won't give you right away. You wait. And after a long time, then Mother Lakshmi came and gave some remnants to Narada Muni. So when Narada Muni got some remnants, he became very ecstatic, eating the remnants of Lord Narayan, very powerful. He became full of ecstasy and he went to see Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva said, Oh, what's what happened, Narada? You're so you're so ecstatic. And Narada Muni was saying, I got the remnants of Lord Narayan. So Lord Shiva said, Really? You must give some for me. So Narada said, well, I only have a little bit on my finger here, there's a little left there, some from in the nail here, some remnants, you can take this. So Lord Shiva also got a little of this, whatever was left of the remnants of Lord Narayan, and he also became ecstatic. And Lord Shiva and Narada Muni were both in ecstasy when Parvati came and said, What's going on? What's happening here? And he said, well, we got the remnants of Lord Narayan. So then she said, what about me? 
And then he said, there's nothing left. It's all finished. <laughs> so that was not a very happy situation. She said, you ate all the prasad, you did not keep even a crumb, one morsel for me, I don't get anything. So she vowed that in the future, whenever there's prasad, it will be for everybody, everyone will get the remnants of the Lord. So when the food is offered, it used to be at least in the past, when the food was offered to Lord Jagannath, then it was taken to offer to Mother Durga. And Mother Durga, then it becomes Maha Maha Prasada. One time, Prabhupada was taking Prasada and he gave Tamal Krishna Goswami a sweet bowl from his plate. Tamal Krishna, at that time he was not a sannyasi, he was just a young devotee. And so he had the sweet ball on his plate and he was keeping it on the, you know, he was keeping it for the last because he was thinking, you know, should eat the sweet at the end. So there was a devotee sitting next to Tamal Krishna who was called Jai Gopal. And this Jai Gopal, he, he saw that Prabhupada had given this sweet to Tamal Krishna. And so when Tamal Krishna Maharaj was not looking, Jai Gopal he took that sweet. <laughs> Uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, you know, he's from New York, you know, and New York people can get very passionate, you know, they get angry. <laughs> so when Tamal Krishna saw that this Jai Gopal had taken his sweet, he grabbed him, you know. <laughs> And Prabhupada was watching and Prabhupada was laughing and said, Today Jagopal has made great advancement. <laughs> so you can even steal the Mahaprasadam, make advancement. So the remnants, the foodstuffs from the devotee, very powerful. We know Narada Muni, he got the remnants from the sadhus who came to stay at his home when he was a young boy, staying with his mother. The sadhus had come to visit their house and he had taken their remnants and it was very purifying, very powerful for him. <laughs> But it mentions there in Srimad Bhagavatam that Narada Muni took the remnants with the permission of the sadhus. He didn't just take it, he didn't steal it. But he took it with their blessing, with their permission. So it's also said the water which washes the feet of the devotee is also very powerful. 
So in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it describes during the festival of Gundicha. Before Rathi Atra, all the devotees would go to Gundicha to clean the Gundicha temple. Right? Before the Rathi Atra, we clean the temple, we have a big clean up in the temple. So Gundicha festival, all the devotees, Lord Chaitanya would go with all the devotees to the Gundicha temple to get ready because Lord Jagannath is going to come there with Balaram and Subhadra and they will stay in the Gundicha temple. But the Gundicha temple had been empty for a year because they only come once a year. So the temple gets very dirty, they have to clean it before the Lord comes. So the devotees would bring big pot, they had all these clay pots and they bring water and the, the whole place was just flowing with water like a river was going through the temple because they want to clean it, make it perfectly clean. So this one devotee, well, yeah, he was a devotee. He got the big pot of, pot of water and he poured it over Lord Chaitanya's feet. And after he poured the water over Lord Chaitanya's feet, then he took the water and drank it. Lord Chaitanya took him by the neck and brought him to Swarup Damodar and said, this is your Bengali Vaishnava. He doesn't know how to behave properly in the temple. Lord Chaitanya was pleased, but at the same time he was not pleased because he, he didn't want to encourage people to do that kind of thing. <laughs> So Lord, Swarup Damodar took him out of the temple, get out, you don't behave properly, you can't stay here. Of course he got the water which washed the feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Very powerful. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur began that song, this Shuddha Bhakata, he began by praising these three things, that these three things are very powerful. And he also talks about things like prasadam, tasting the, the sak, Lord Chaitanya's favorite preparation, sak. In Bengal they get a lot of sak, right? And they have many nice sak there. But that was one of Lord Chaitanya's favorite preparations. Bhaktivinoda Thakur also says, uh, he talks about the sound of the Madanga and uh, visiting the holy places of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. All of these things very powerful for our Krishna consciousness. <laughs> 
So we can see Krishna consciousness that the, 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 the spiritual world, this is the spiritual world when we're in Krishna consciousness, that everywhere is, we, we see Krishna and we see devotional service. Mm. Prabhupada was saying, I'm not in America, I'm in Vrindavan. The same way we're not in Thailand, right? We didn't come here to learn anything from Thailand. We came to be Krishna conscious. When we keep ourselves always engaged in Krishna conscious activities, then that is the spiritual world. Brahma Nirvana. This is the, 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 the idea of becoming nothing. <laughs> it's meaningless. It means that there's nothing to look forward to. There's no enjoyment. There's no pleasure. Very dry. Just sit and meditate. You don't do anything. You don't do any harm. You don't do any good either. But devotee, they do the greatest good. That's the welfare activities for the benefit of all living entities by chanting the holy name and distributing Krishna consciousness. We saw last night at that Durga Puja thing, there were so many people there who, you know, the, becoming possessed by the spirit of Durga and, you know, showing different symptoms that they were possessed, that they were mediums or something. But what good do they do for anyone? They don't do any good for anybody. They don't know anything. And they can't, they don't, they can't do anything which is very, have any value to anybody. Uh, Tamal Krishna was studying at the university, Tamal Krishna Maharaj was studying at the university and he met this one professor who had taken an interest in the the poetry which was written in glorification of Durga and Kali. And so he was going to India, to Bengal, during the time of the Durga Puja. And so Tamal Krishna Goswami arranged that when he went to India, he would arrange that he could also go and visit Mayapur. So the professor described when he got to Bengal, you know, it was 
totally disorganized and he got to the place where this Durga Puja festival was going on and people were all intoxicated and then they were killing and go killing goats, there was, there was animal slaughter going on and people were all intoxicated, been drinking, you know, it's just a horrible situation. And nobody took care of him, nobody was there to welcome him or to look after him. He had such a, a you know, unpleasant experience. But when he went to Mayapur, it was totally different. He could see the difference in the atmosphere, the whole transcendence which is there in the Holy Dham, like Mayapur, so different from this, these activities where people are worshipping these other gods. So the surprising thing is that so many people are worshipping these other gods. They're so misguided and unfortunate and we have to try to give them some mercy. So, otherwise we, we really don't have any business there, but we go there to give them Krishna consciousness. And let them hear the holy name, try to give books and try and let them have some prasada, somehow or other to give them some mercy. They need it. We are fortunate, they are the unfortunate souls. We want to try to help them, make them also fortunate. Hare Krishna. Okay, any question? Yes, bro. Yes, Maharaj. There's a you said two story. One Narasuni is asking the remnant and the other Kalidas is not asking the remnant. So is that any harmful doing like that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we said Jai Gopal didn't ask, but Prabhupada said he made great advancement. So, if you get the remnants. We have to have the right mood, the right attitude. Not to take, just like this Kalidas, he was eating those mango stones, but he had great respect for the Vaishnavas and for the remnants of the Vaishnavas. He was not doing any, he was not giving any bad karma to that person. If you eat the remnants of someone, then you may have to take their karma. That's why we don't eat food cooked by non-devotees. We will get their karma.
But if it's a devotee, it's okay, no karma. You get their bhakti. That's what we want, right? Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.